What is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Eric Wilson, today joined by my co-hosts, Anthony Rivardo and Will Cohen. The vibes are a little off today. You know, after the Rangers went up 3 nothing in the series, some of you guys watching thought it was a pretty much done deal right then and there. I know we were always more like, it's 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 not going to be that easy. Like, Will, they're not going to roll over just like the Washington Capitals did. Um, but at this point, uh, Thursday night is going to be game six in Carolina. Tensions are getting a little weird. Um, some of y'all, your panic meters are rising pretty hard. So we're going to be pretty much doing a game five recap as well as kind of just looking into what's next as far as this series goes and what needs to happen in order for the Rangers to really close out the deal and get the job done. But before we get into that, make sure you guys like, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss notification. If you're watching us on Apple or Spotify, be sure to give us a five-star review. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below on game five and all the things that you thought might have went wrong. The way I'm looking at it is take out all your frustrations in the comment section below so we can get back on the good vibe train tomorrow heading into game six. But lastly, be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at Fireside Rangers for daily Rangers content, updates, news, and all that good stuff over there. But before we really get into it, Anthony, how are you doing? And what were your thoughts on yesterday's abysmal game? I'm doing okay. My thoughts on yesterday's game are that I liked the first period and I hated everything after that. I thought that they were playing uh, with pretty good energy in the first. I thought they were fast paced. They weren't getting outshot by a wide margin like they had been in the previous two games, but it really all just fell apart midway through that second period. And then it really fell apart in that third period. That was ugly. It's really disappointing to see this team kind of come down to earth here we, we kind of were high flying high at the sun you know just cruising through space for a little while seven wins in a row and this crash and dissension down onto the surface of earth has not felt too nicely over the last two games it's it's just kind of i think a lot of it is though that we went a month without a rangers loss and now that we're experiencing some rangers losses they're just really hard to deal with uh because they're so unexpected now but generally you got to perform better than that in the playoffs. Those were some ugly performances. Obviously, I wasn't here to give my recap for previous games. So ugly times right now, but I do still feel confident that we're going to be able to bounce back. Yeah, I'm also confident. Um, I like how you brought up how, how the first period was good because during yesterday's pregame live stream that me and Colin did, a big major talking point between us and a lot of the fans were that we need to have a really good first period, which would let, allow us to be able to ride that momentum further into the game. But the opposite happened. We had a very good first period, and then everything came <laughs> falling apart and unraveling upon our eyes. But speaking of Colin, he's not able to be here today, but he did give me an official statement um, in the form of a meme. He said, don't let anyone ruin your day. It's your day. Ruin it yourself by believing in the New York Rangers. So, <laughs> so shout out Colin for that one. But Will, welcome back. How are you doing? I'm glad to be back. Just want to get that out of the way first. Um, I was... I was upset after, like, as soon as, like, well, I guess after the third goal. No, once they scored the empty netter, I turned it off. Um, and then this morning, you know, I kind of came down to earth, and adversity is needed to win a cup. It's how you respond to it. And and I'm confident that this team is going to be able to respond back in game six. Um, they've done it all year. So I like to look at the, at the Golden Knights last year in the Western Conference Final. They went up. 3-0, lost games four and five, and then one and six. So it's all about how you respond to adversity. And I think I think this team, they've done it all year, and I think they can do it in game six. I hope so. I mean, there, there's definitely a few things that need to happen in order for us to overcome this adversity that we're facing. I, to me, I think the biggest thing is that the star players need to just come back from wherever they went. You look at Panarin, Trocek, Fox, um, Zabanajad, Kreider, they all have played amazing in games one and two. And then when the world needed them most, they vanished. Our, our Tammy Panarin has done practically nothing um, in, in the last two games. And he's going to be a big part of bouncing back, getting the swing of momentum back in our favor and winning game six on the road. Um, Igor has still played great. I think the only reason these two games were even somewhat of a competition or before Igor, because Igor carried us, but I think the biggest ones, Trocek and Panarin, where did they go? We need them to come back. So, I mean, that's my take on it. Um, but, like, Anthony, who who do you need to see more from, in your opinion? 
or Temi Panarin easily. I, I think that he's been pretty much a non-factor in the last two games. And I, I even think in that – it was that game three he hit the game winner in overtime. I thought for a lot of that game he wasn't playing well either. I mean, obviously he made the game winner, so he made up for everything. But I remember we were texting about it. Eric, he had a blown chance that annoyed me in that one. And I thought for the, for the majority of that game, he was kind of a non-factor until that game winner. Uh, and then to see him follow that up with two more games where he really has been a non-factor, it almost feels like. You know, if he didn't have that game winner, we'd be talking about this entire series, him playing really poorly. Uh, and I just think that it's concerning because obviously we know the history of Artemi Panarin and last year, how he didn't show up in that series against the Devils and kind of the way that that shifted the narrative around him and around this New York Rangers team. And so I'm worried because he had admitted that his confidence got shook after a few of those games where he wasn't playing well last year. I know that there's been ups and downs throughout the season and the team has continued to bounce back from them, which again is why I believe that they will. But there is in the back of my mind, a slight concern that if Panarin's confidence gets shaken here and he doesn't bounce back in this upcoming game six, you know, game seven, if that happens, if we happen to have a game seven, I'm very afraid that Artemi Panarin's confidence is going to be too shook to make that comeback to form by the time that we get there. So I think that this game six is going to be really crucial and not to be too dramatic about it. It's going to be crucial for the legacy of Artemi Panarin wearing a Ranger sweater. I think that's how I feel about it. This is a huge moment in his career and it's a huge moment for the Rangers in general. I think the problem is that it's been so long since he cut his hair. Like he's got a full head of hair again. He needs to just cut it all back off, go back to right where we started. <laughs> he's playing amazing at the beginning of the season, but Will, I know you love Panarin. Uh, I'm, I'm, ve I'm very curious to know um, your interpretation of what's going on with him and how he can respond. I just, I don't. I mean, I couldn't lie when I was at the when I was at the game on Thursday. I mean, like I didn't. I really wasn't just folk. Not Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. I wasn't really just focusing on anyone, so I didn't really like notice. Like when I go to the games, like I don't really notice particular players. Like I kind of just notice particular plays. I guess I'm so locked in, but. Yeah, games four and five, he, he hasn't been himself. And we said before this series and even before the playoffs that Panarin was going to be an X factor. And, you know, games one through four of the of the first round, then games one and two of the, of the second round, he was. And, and we won those two games. Obviously, we won games game three, two. But now, he, now you're looking at games four. Where where was he? he didn't really, I don't think he had a shot on goal in game four. I don't think he had a shot on goal yesterday. So, you're going to really need him to to step up. But I can't just pin this on one person. I think everyone needs to be, you know, play better. Even Igor, like, I mean, he'd probably tell you that too. I don't think he played bad necessarily, but just everyone needs to play better up and down the lineup. So, um, but yeah, I think Panarin's disappearance has been, has been a, has not been good for the Rangers. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you're right that it, it is everyone because it's, it's especially frustrating when the only goal that was scored in game five was a shorthanded goal from Jacob Truba. And I'm sure we'll talk about Truba at some point throughout this episode, but I really just want to focus on this, the way in which the goal was scored. We didn't score a single even strength goal last night. We didn't score a single power play goal last night. We got lucky that Carolina made a mistake and gave Jacob Truba a clear lane into, into the, the goal scoring opportunity. And luckily he capitalized it. Otherwise we would have been shut out by a very good defensive Carolina team. So in my opinion, the only player in the entire top six that has looked good over the last couple games is Alexi Lafreniere. And I, every, I know we just had like a whole segment on Panarin individually, but I think everything that we said about him could the same could be said about Trocek for Zabanajad, for Roslovic, Kreider, um, everyone really. I'm I'm very unimpressed by the offense these last couple games, but. Um, speaking of defense, Jacob Truba, there was one period last night where he, he looked normal and I, we were like, Oh, this is, this is, this is a nice sight to see Jacob Truba's playing good hockey in the first period, scoring goals, making great defensive plays. And he, he tricked us because as soon as the first period ended and then the rest of the game started, he just became the worst player on the ice again. And I don't know what needs to happen. I know we talked about potentially scratching him, putting in Zach Jones, you know, it might be a bold move to scratch your captain, but at the end of the day, when he's the worst player on your roster, 
the C doesn't protect you from being a bad hockey player. So at, at this point, I kind of want to see Zach Jones in. Um, even if it's not for Truba, if he, if he goes in for Gustafson, I think we need a, like a fresh face in that defensive core. They haven't looked good the last couple games, and it, it might be time to just switch things up. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it is time for a change. Obviously, we've talked a lot about Truba during the series and really during this postseason about how he hasn't been playing well. I don't know if enough uh, conversation is taking shape around Adam Fox right now either, who's obviously playing hurt and not playing at the level that he should be. I just think in general, the entire core, the defensive core, is just not playing well. Like I do agree with you in, in saying that there needs to be a massive shakeup, change everything up. I think that is where we're going, and that's what Peter Laviolette's going to have to do because it's not just one or two guys disrupting everything. It really is just everybody is not playing well right now. So I think that some serious change-up needs to be made in order to try and correct things. Yeah, I, I, I do have some thoughts to share about Peter Laviolette, but first I just want to give Will the opportunity if you had anything to add about Truba or just the defense in general. I think they just played – too loose last night like you can't uh, especially against a carolina team that you know they're they're very good at 5v5 and and if you play too loose it's going to come back and bite you in the ass and that's what happened last night in the first four games they were playing very tight in their own zone they weren't you know they were forcing carolina to make mistakes they were forcing them to the perimeter and and yesterday it just seemed like a lot of carolina's offensive zone time was in, it was in the slot close to the net. That's where, I mean, a lot of their goals were scored yesterday. And that break, that, that Eric Stahl, uh, not Eric Stahl, sorry, that Jordan Stahl goal was, I mean, that was pathetic defense from Braden Schneider. And I've been very happy with his game so far in the postseason, but that was pathetic. Like, that is 35 year old Jordan Stahl you're letting get around you because you decided that you could just sit back and watch. Like, that's pathetic. Like, 35-year-old Eric Jordan Stahl. Like, come on. And but I I think I think they'll tighten up again in game in game six. I, I don't think I do not think Peter Laviolette is gonna allow the defense. I don't think he's gonna allow the offense to play how they did. I think they're gonna they that will not happen again under Peter Laviolette, I think, this series. I, mm -hmm. I just don't. I don't think he's gonna allow it. Yeah. Speaking of Peter, Daddy Love, as we like to call him. Um, I think we're at a crossroads for him where he's been so great all season long. He's made necessary adjustments when needed. He's pulled this team out of a, like a month long slump, won us the president's trophy and got us to the second round of the playoffs. But right now, when we think about Peter Laviolette's first season with the Rangers, it's not going to be a president's trophy win. It's going to be how he responds for the remainder of this series. Is he going to be able to pull the momentum back in favor of the Rangers make the changes needed in order to win this? Or is he going to, you know, do what he, the coach, he who shall not be named from last year did, and then just not do anything and let the team fall. So obviously I'm faithful in Peter Laviolette. I, I think he, he's going to, he's going to do what he needs to do. Um, I don't know what the changes would be. The only criticism I have for him is that he needs to make a final decision on Matt Rempe or whoever is going to be on that fourth line. Like if you're going to put in Johnny Broad, keep in Johnny Broad. If you're going to put in Rempe, use him for the whole game. Don't use him for like, like four minutes and then just bench him. And then we're down a forward. Like that's the, like, I trust Peter. I know he's going to do the right thing, but that's my only critique is that whatever's going on with that fourth line, there needs to be one clear game plan for the entire game and not just, waste a roster spot on the half used rumpy but i don't know tony it's peter i saw your face get all jumpy when i started yeah. talking about it. i'm not agreeing with the analysis here personally and it's not just because i really like peter laviolette it's it's more so like you almost compared him there to gerard gallant and it's like gerard gallant literally sat on his hands and did nothing the changes that we've seen on the fourth line are Peter Laviolette trying to do something. Like he is making adjustments. This is not on Laviolette. This is on the core players. This is on Panarin. This is on Trocek. Last night it was also on Igor. This is on the defensive core. Peter Laviolette is making the adjustments. He is trying to right the ship right now. This isn't what Gallant did last year where he did literally nothing and just trusted the players to fix it. Laviolette is trying to fix it for them. 
he needs cooperation from the players. The coaches can coach. The players do have to execute. Mm-hmm. He can't go on the ice and, sh- and score goals as well. They got to do that stuff. But he's trying to put them in the position to succeed. And every which way, they are failing him. It's not on Laviolette right now, in my opinion. So I don't think that – and I'm not saying necessarily that you were making a one-for-one comparison between him and Gallant. I know that's not what you were doing. But if there are people on the internet who are doing that, I think that they need to – reshift their perspective and take a look at the efforts that Laviolette has made to fix things. And so far it hasn't paid off, but I think it's really tough to sell to me that he's the reason that they haven't paid off. There is no way that you could convince me that Peter Laviolette is the reason that this team has lost these last two games. He has tried to make these adjustments. Philip Heedle comes in, Philip Heedle provides, provides a spark. Philip Heedle leaves with an illness. That's not Laviolette's fault, you know, and then having the switching between Brodzinski and Rempe, He's trying to figure out what works there the best. He thinks that it's Philip Heedle, but Philip Heedle wasn't ready to go last night. He's trying to get it figured out. Everything else is just preventing this team from actually winning these games, but it's not Peter Laviolette preventing them. Like we saw last year what bad coaching looked like. We've seen now what good coaching looks like throughout the regular season, throughout the first round sweep. We're still seeing good coaching, in my opinion. We're seeing adjustments attempted to be made. It's just not working, and again, it's because of this core. It's it's the core players who are not playing up to par and not playing at the level that they're supposed to be playing at. So I'm putting the blame on the players right now. I know that I've, on this channel, grown my reputation as being the Laviolette supporter and defender. I don't think that's necessarily what I'm doing right now. Like, I am defending him, but I think that – I imagine a lot of people feel the same way as me, right? Like, he is trying to make these adjustments and do what a good coach does – the players are just not executing his game plan and they're t- completely failing this team and this fan base. Yeah. I just want to clarify because like um, before I, I received the hate comments, <laughs> um, I, I, the only really, really, the, I still do believe in Peter Laviolette. I don't think it's his fault at all. Like, like you said, Anthony, it's, it's all, it's on the players right now for not living up to what Laviolette's doing for them. I think the comparison I was trying to make was just that Laviolette's reputation in his first year might come down to just how this playoff series ends. Um, kind of like how Gerard Gallant's reputation was destroyed when the Rangers got eliminated last year. So even though I don't think it would actually be Peter Laviolette's fault, I know he's doing his best. I know how the Rangers work, and it, it might come down to that. But I think if, yeah. this, if this series does lose, or we if the Rangers do end up losing the series, which we'll hopefully not have to talk about, more than this um it's gonna there's gonna be some big changes coming to new york and i if the rangers fire laviolette i would be shocked upset mortified but there would be big changes coming and i don't i'm assuming it would have to be with the players because i don't think laviolette could be at any fault in what's going on here there's i have faith in them um the changes will be made the lucky thing is is that we don't have to play tomorrow when i when the schedule for the second round first came out and i saw that game five would be on a monday and then game six wouldn't be on to a Thursday. And I was like, I was like, that that kind of sucks. Like I gotta wait a couple days in between seeing games. But right now I'm like, thank God that like the Rangers have two days to figure out whatever's going on and just get out of it. Um, so shout out the NHL for that one. It's rare that they ever um, find a dub from me. But <laughs> well, uh, me and Tony been hogging the mic. Uh, I'm curious. Right, I'm going to I'm gonna just real quick before yeah. I pass it off to Will, right. and I'm sorry, Will, because I know that you want to talk. No, right. I just – you okay, first, Eric, you made a good point. The extra day of rest, extra day for Philip Heedle to get his ass back in the lineup because now it's evident that we need him. So I'm thankful for that as well. Uh, but then on the other point, just to kind of finish my argument for Laviolette, there is no way that you can convince me he should be scapego- scapegoated for the season if the plays playoffs don't go the way that they're supposed to. Like I said, when I was talking about Panarin, this is more so what is Panarin's legacy going to be, not what is the perspective going to be on Peter Laviolette at the end of the year. This is on Panarin, Trocek. This is on the players. Like That's how I'm feeling. This is going to be, if anybody gets scapegoated, it's going to be like Chris Drury, in my opinion. This can't be on Laviolette. I think that what he's done all year long. Yes, obviously back against the wall right now. Let's see how he responds. This will obviously be a big talking point going into the offseason, how Laviolette responds to this and whether or not he can right this ship here with his back against the wall. But just like I said, this is the legacy moment for some of these key players, not just Panarin. I keep saying him, but there are other players as well. It's their time to really make the impact. And if they don't want to get scapegoated, they got to step up and play. And Tony, the worst part is 
you're right on everything that you've just said, but I've, I've already seen the La Violette like change up from everyone coming. Which is, which is why I'm so loud on the mic today. I've seen it too. That's why I have to, this, this needs to be on the players, but I do feel bad. Will I, I got to hear your no, perspective. No, as well. no, it's okay. Some that's how I feel sometimes, right? I just need to get stuff out. So I totally understand. But yeah, the fact that Peter Lobby let's get scapegoated for this is a little, I have not seen any th- anything on Twitter because I've been trying to stay off of it because I just I can't I can't with some Ranger fans. It's just I get it. You, you know, you you lost. It, it was an embarrassing loss yesterday, but that was your first embarrassing loss of the series. You, I I think Game Four they played very well besides the first, but you can't put this. You cannot pin this on Lamulette. Like you see what he's done in the season after you know a loss and well besides. Excluding the slump that obviously, you know, people, you know, we had injured players and everything like that, but you see how he's responded to losses and, and he's done a very good job at having this team come back, get back on track and, and not snowball losses together. And, you know, obviously yesterday they didn't play well, but you can't, you cannot put that on Lavia. That was on the players. The players yesterday just didn't seem like they had, they cared about, about winning in the third period. They were playing to lose yesterday. They were playing Gerard Gallant hockey yesterday. You take a lead and you sit back and you play to not lose. And that's the exact same reason they lost. And, and in, in games one, two, three, and four, even though they were, I mean, uh, yeah, they were down going into the third period, but they were, you know, they were playing their hearts out and, and, and in games one and two, when they had the lead going into, you know, going into the final minutes of the game. Yeah. I know in games, in games, well, one, two, and three, actually, I know in game three, the Canes scored, but the Rangers in that third period were playing, we're going to play to win and stomp on your throat and cut you off at the head. We're going to stomp on you. And that's just not what they wanted to do yesterday. They did not care. They had one high danger scoring chance. They were not firing off shots like they've been doing pretty well at Anderson. They weren't testing him at all. So the fact that Peter Laviolette's getting blamed for this and scapegoated is is crazy to me. I do not agree with that whatsoever. Yeah, I don't know. The Rangers have the best fan base in the world, but we also have a small subsection of that fan base that might be some of like the I'm sorry to everyone out there, some of the dumbest fans in the NHL. The fact that we love Laviolette so much and then we lose two games in the playoffs. We're seven and two in the playoffs still. Like, let's not forget that. And then now everyone's gunning for him. That's what makes me nervous. Um just because I, I know if we do choke this series, it twi- I I would have to delete Twitter. I don't know if I could read anything that we say. <laughs> or by we I mean Rangers fans, but I don't know. Like I said, I still I, I know that Laviolette's going to get the job done. He has two days to sit his players down, work them extra hard, and get them into that mindset that they're going on the road. They need to invade Carolina and walk away heading into the conference finals. So, yeah, the fact that we've like lost back-to-back games, it does raise my panic meter just like a little bit. But at the end of the day, before this series even started, my, my prediction was Rangers would win this series in six games. We knew it would be a long, hard-fought series. The only downside is is that like we started off by winning three straight. So I think our expectations were just raised tenfold. Like everyone in our comments talking about a sweep and who we're going to play next round. I'm like, we're not there yet, you know. Heading like we were up two nothing, and then heading onto the road, I was just like, as long as we split. Those games, I think, will be fine. We did split it. It's just unfortunate that the split came with a win first. We're up three nothing, and we're like, oh, we like it's over. And then they we lose the next one, gives them a sliver of hope. Then they win the next one, and now they have all the momentum heading into Game Six. But so I'm a little nervous, but at the end of the day, I'm still confident. Like my my panic meter from like one to ten, from like one being like one thousand percent confident. 10 being like, I fully believe this series is lost. I'm only going to say it's it's like right in the middle at like a five. Like I, the fear is there. I know I said it a million times before the playoffs. No team scared me. I'm feeling a little nervous right now, but I'm not I'm not going out here saying it's it's Jover. Like we're all good. I'm at a 60 40 right now. I say 60 percent confidence, 40 percent worry. 
So you're just at a four out of ten on the panic wheel meter. Would that be? I guess. I'm at a 60, 40, 60% 60 nervous, 40% confident. I'm just, I'm a nervous Nelly though. It's not that I'm not confident in this team. It's just that I'm very afraid of losing and what's going to happen if, if they do lose because going into a game seven after being up three to zero is the scariest thing that I can possibly think of. And I also do not share the same sentiment as you, Eric, where, you know, you, you just said like going into the postseason, you weren't scared of any team. I'm even scared, especially now that we've dropped these, games in a row i'm scared of florida going into their second eastern conference finals in a row i think they're going to be hungry as shit and desperate to make it to the to the cup so i'm just overall nervous right now i need the rangers to close this thing out immediately next game done don't even let it go to seven don't entertain this just get it done man they should have gotten it done last night that first period again looked promising trouble with the shorty then it all just fell apart it, it's very frustrating but they just got to close this thing out, man. Yeah. And I like, I kind of like how we just had like a very like average ranking there. Like Will was four, I was five, you were six. So we <laughs> ad average them all together. We're about halfway there. You know, we're, um, Colin's not here today. And I, I can't speak for him based on facts, but, but the way he was texting us last night, he, he's probably like an eight or a nine if I had to guess. Um, but I don't know. Hopefully we just, like you said, Tony, close it out on Thursday. But I've, I've really said all I have to say. I just need this team to wake up and get the job done. But unless you all have any closing thoughts, um, I'm ready to wrap up. I'm, I just, they need to come out Saturday, uh, not Saturday, sorry, Thursday and just put everything behind them. I, I know for a fact that, well, Peter Laviolette's presser, he sounded pretty pissed and I know that he probably chewed chewed those players to hell. So I'd be completely shocked if they didn't come out with a fire under their ass on, on Thursday. Yeah. I mean, I, I will say, um, just side note, um, Will, because like our, our first jerseys that we wore, my Lafreniere one and your Panarin one. I'm not wearing they, anything Rangers related on Thursday. They, they, had, they had a hell of a run, those jerseys. My Kako mm. jersey – failed me horribly last night. I was like, I was like, all right, we lost. We were never going to get 16 to no. switching up the Jersey. It got the Kako on. We're going to go on like another, like seven game streak with this bad boy. Last, it lasted about two hours. I didn't, I took it off before the game. <laughs> yeah, me too. Actually I did, but I'm not wearing anything Ranger related on, on Thursday. Nothing. I might need to wear my cursed Panarin Jersey just to like go all in. I'm like, Oof. I'm you know what? All on black at, and like, do it. Break, let's break the curse. We're breaking the curse on Thursday. I hope so. I'm still waiting on my Trocheck jersey. It just shipped this morning, though, so it should be here soon enough. Can't wait to get that. But speaking of Trocheck, that's one last thing that I want to say in my closing thoughts. I saw his uh, comments at his locker after the game last night saying it was very clear that they wanted to win this more than we did. And I think that is probably the best way to summarize what happened last night. They, they came out swinging early. The Rangers did. Both teams did, really. Once they got that 1-0 lead, they totally took their foot off the gas and just sat back. And I think that they were all just like, Igor will handle the rest. When Igor isn't playing like Superman, this team is not as great as we perceive it to be. And that's a problem. Like When they're constantly relying on Igor Shosturkin to just be magical – that's when the Rangers always end up beating themselves. And that's what happened last night. That's what happened against the Devils last year, I think. So going into this next game, they need three full periods and they need to play like they want it. And if they do take an early lead, they can't just sit on it. Like make it a 2-0 lead, make it a 3-0 lead, like blow them out, drop a touchdown on them. I don't care. Don't just sit back and expect Igor to shut them out or to, to hold them to a minimal amount of goals while you guys lackadaisically – jog your way to the finish line it's got to be a full sprint through and through yeah and um, one more thing eric i'm really sorry yeah keep your foot on the damn gas like do keep testing anderson even when you're up like there's no reason to stop i don't care what i don't care if it's six nothing you keep testing that i can't say that. i'm sorry you keep testing him you keep putting on shots on net you keep the intensity up you keep forechecking you keep back checking you keep making plays you keep hitting keep being physical you cannot take your foot off the gas against this Carolina Hurricanes team. 
Um, the last thing I'll say, because I, I said I was done, but I, then I opened up Twitter. Here's a cool stat from Stat Boy Steven. Before the Rangers this year, there have been 22 times in NHL history where a team has gone up 3 nothing in a series and then lost games four and five. Now, of those 22 times it's happened, um, the team that went up 3 nothing has lost in game seven just four times. They've won it in seven five times. But the most likely outcome – and the one that we're hoping for is 13 times out of the 22 has the has the team won the series in six games. So the odds are in our favor um, based on history. And this is a year where we're, we talk a lot about history. I wonder if any of them happened in 94, probably at this rate. <laughs> so um, the, the odds are still in our favor. But the fact that we're one of 22 occurrences to go up 3-0 and then go into a game six in and of itself shows the problem right there that like that is a rare occurrence for the Rangers to find themselves where they are right now is essentially what the stats that you're telling us are saying only 22 times. That's, that's not a lot of times. And that's um, that again, just shows this is a little bit of a, a collapse that we really shouldn't have seen. Yeah. I mean, well, the scariest part talk about rare occurrences is that only four times has a team up three, nothing gotten reverse swept and choked. Please don't make us number five, man. <laughs> like, re- please. We're trying to go for Stanley Cup number five. It's, it's the wrong number five that, that we're leaning towards at the moment. <laughs> but, yeah. We need the foot on the gas, and we got to close it out next game. Yep. yep. Go for the neck. Speaking about closing it out, that about wraps up today's episode of Fireside Rangers. If you guys did enjoy, please make sure that you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell to this notification. I'm sure that this video, the comments are going to be really respectful. We're all going to agree on everything, so be sure to be very vocal down there because we love to hear your thoughts on how we're feeling ahead of Game 6 in just a couple of days. Lastly, be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at Fireside Rangers because we got a lot of discussion threads over there, too, on some more specific individual topics that I think you guys might like. Um, But once again, hope you enjoyed. Have a good one. And let's Let's go go Rangers. Rangers.